It is. It's me. It's TRG, the Ramblin' Gambler. Hello, everyone. What I am going to do today in this video is I am going to demonstrate for you TRG wagering system for win more, keep more. And I'm doing that because one of the most common requests that I get is to show the wagering system, not describe the wagering system. And usually it goes like this. I get an email and it says, hi, TRG, love the podcast. Da, 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 da. I was just listening to episode something, something, something. Do you have a video of the wagering system? I'm a visual learner. So I recognize that that's a thing. And so I'm going to try to make these videos to address that very, very common request. So there is TRG wagering system one, the one and only. The first wagering system that I invented that I had success with. And I played it for years in Las Vegas and in Atlantic City with a great deal of success. It was designed for those environments. It was designed when those were the only environments I really had available to me. And then as casinos became available more and more in my area, I would continue to use that. And it works fine. It will win you money. It will win you money, especially if you can just bounce from table to table to table. Nothing wrong with TRG Wagering System 1, the one, the only. Um, but I found that over time, I was gambling in situations where I couldn't bounce from table to table. And I needed something different. I needed a different solution. And I needed something that let me stay at tables longer to earn more tier credits. Because that's a big part of being good at the game of casino gambling is exploiting comps and free stuff and all of the things that come with tier credits and tier status. So I invented TRG Wagering System 2. Always be grinding. And it works great. I played it for years and years before I even started the podcast. So I know that it works. But I found one little problem. And so let me tell you what I have set up here. I have a diagram here on the table. I have a circle for making a wager, just like you would have on a blackjack table. And I have a square marked play. And I have a square marked win. Those do not exist on a blackjack table. They exist in my imagination at a blackjack table. But they do not phys physically exist. And I'm going to use this area to show you how the wagering system works. And the thing I need to tell you is this. For it to look correct on the camera, to look correct for you, it has to be backwards for and upside down for me. At least that's how I understand the equipment that I have set up. So I have to move backwards compared to what I want you to see, and that's fine. It's not a big deal. But I wanted you to be aware that if it looks a little strange in my motions, that's probably why. Let me tell you a couple other things, and then I'll, I'll get to the situation that TRG Wagering System 4 addresses. So let me tell you some more of the back, background here. I have a computer program. It's set up to deal blackjack hands. It's a six-deck game. Dealer stands on all 17s. Blackjacks pay three to two. Do not ever play a blackjack game that pays six to five. If you can possibly help it, do not play. The only way that abomination leaves the earth is if we avoid playing it. Insurance pays two to one. That's standard, and it doesn't matter. We know the math. We know that's not a good wager to make. Now, you don't have to worry about any of this money down here. Uh, I'm going to set this as a uh, $5 wager. I'm going to try to set this as a $5 wager. Oh, there we go. No, let's clear that off. Can I make it a $1 wager? I can't reach that. All right, it's a $5 wager. Don't worry about any of this. The real wagers are going to take place over here, and I'm going to talk through all of them. Next, this is being recorded live and continuously. When I do the podcast, it's nice. If I need to sneeze, if I need to cough, I can take care of that and T-Rex edits, edits it out. See? This is live. This is not going to be edited. You're going to hear that mispronunciation. Once again, if this were the podcast, I might pause, say take two, repeat the sentence, and let T-Rex chop it out for me on the back end to make things very clean and smooth. That's not going to happen. This is a computer that we're using. It may do something unexpected. It may pop up my email. It may pop up a notification down here to tell me something. I may misclick something. That could happen. That's not going to get edited out either. I guarantee you, 
that we will not have anything come up on the screen that is not suitable for work. We're not going to have anything come up on the screen that screen that is adult material. We're not going to have any of those issues or concerns. But if my email pops up, we're just going to close my email. If the Microsoft Store decides it has to show me something or a website decides it has to open for some reason, we're just going to close that and we're just going to keep moving forward with the teaching part of all of this. So I found a small flaw or the Galaxy showed me a small flaw, or Constant Play showed me a small flaw in TRG Wagering System 2, Always Be Grinding. And like a lot of things in life, once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. And then the universe, the Casino Combat Galaxy, the the gods of, of gamblers, whatever force or my own brain demanded that I solve this flaw in Always Be Grinding, in TRG Wagering System 2. And here's the flaw. I bet one unit. I lose. I bet one unit. I win. I have the same chip back. I bet one unit. I lose. I bet one unit. I win. I have the same chip back. And I always thought, for a long time, for years, I always thought, well, that's just, TRG, that's just the the grinding part of this. That's just the grind. It's okay. You're there. You're you're getting tier points. You're in the casino. You're having fun. And you're winning more than you're losing. That's just the way it goes. Eventually, having seen this over and over for years, my brain very recently uh, told me that this isn't okay. That, that I had to fix this. And I found a fix. And that fix became TRG Wagering System 4, Win More, Keep More. And that's what I'm going to show you here today. Now, I taught the original TRG Wagering System 2, Always Be Grinding, in episodes 62 and 63 of our Casino Combat podcast. And I just recently, in episode 97, taught the variation that I'm going to show you here today uh, in this video. I just recently, in episode 97, as I said, taught... TRG Wagering System 4, Win More, Keep More. That's what this video is about. So, if you're watching this video and you are not familiar with those three episodes, I strongly encourage you to go listen to the core concepts segment of those episodes. Go to CasinoCombat.com. That uh, combat is spelled with a K, by the way, if you're not aware. But go to CasinoCombat.com and you will see the ways that you can listen or look for us on Spotify, Google, Apple, any of the places that you get podcasts. Casino Combat, spelled with a K, will be very easy to find. And you want to find episodes 62, 63, and 97 to hear me teach all of this uh, in in one process. And I'm not going to teach always be grinding as part of this. Well, I am in the sense that we're going to do it over here, but I'm not going to teach it. So I've shown you the flaw. I've told you that this is a modification of TRG Wagering System 2. I've told you how to learn that. What are the modifications? There are exactly two modifications. In TRG Wagering System 1, the one, the only, I tell you that your negative exit is when you get down to three units in this stack. That's your negative exit point. You take whatever's here, you take whatever's here, you walk away, you count up, you record. One modification to that process is, which we also use in TRG Wagering System 2, same negative exit, we modify our negative exit point here to two units in this stack, not three. And that's necessary because the other modification is, if you make this wager... When you make any wager, if this stack is nine chips, when you make the wager and you lose, your next wager is two units. If you win, you will have a one unit profit. If you lose, you go back to a one unit wager until you win and then you start the regressive portion of the wagering system. So, Two units here as the negative exit. If you make a wager, any wager, and there are nine units here when you make the wager and you lose, the next wager is two units. Those are the two modifications to TRG Wagering System 2. Always be grinding. Now, if you are very, very new, if you perhaps found this video randomly on our YouTube channel 
and you're like, well, there's wagering system one, the one, the only, there's wagering system two, TRG wagering system two, always be grinding. There's TRG wagering system four, win more, keep more. Why do you skip three? I didn't skip three. Three is TRG wagering system three, the Meta Martingale. But the Meta Martingale is really not something to be shown. It's just something to be taught because TRG Wagering System 3, the Meta Martingale, can be used as an addition to any of my other three wagering systems. And in a perfect world, it would have been TRG Wagering System uh, 4, but I didn't know there was a TRG Wagering System 4 when I invented TRG Wagering System 3. So now we're all just stuck with it. We just got to live with the fact that they're kind of in backwards order and they're going to be for the rest of time because it's already been discussed and I'm not going to try to change all the podcast episodes to fix all of it. That would be a, a gigantic undertaking that we do not have the resources or manpower to begin with. So four wagering systems. I'm going to show you the fourth one today and this is all live in the sense that I have no idea what hands the computer is going to generate. I have no idea what circumstances we are going to see play out over here in this part of, of the window for you. So let's get started. I'm going to make a one-unit wager. Oh, I need to tell you the rest of it. These are blue chips. They're what I happen to have in an old poker set. We're going to treat them as green chips. We're going to treat these as $25 green chips. And those are going to sit right there. I've got 10 units, and they're going to sit right there. I also have red chips. Those are red chips. Those are $5 chips as they would be in any casino. And I have these white chips, and we're going to use those as $2.50 chips. That would not be correct in a casino. In a casino, these would normally be $1 chips. But we are going to use them as $2.50 chips because my poker set from back when I was in high school or college college uh, has uh, three colors. And that's what we're going to do. So let's play a hand. I'm going to get started. I bought in for 10 units. I put them right here in my imaginary box marked play on the blackjack table. I've made my one unit bet, and here we go. All right, blackjack right off the bat. Excellent. So I am going to get paid a $25 chip. You can't see that. I am going to get paid another extra $12.50. I've been properly paid. That goes right here. As the start of my win stack, that's excellent. And technically, I need to move this back to my abacus. Okay, I don't need to bet anything more. I have not won two hands in a row. We do not start the progressive part of things unless we've won two hands in a row. All right, I've lost. There were nine chips here when I made the wager. There are still nine chips here. This is a two-unit bet. I lost. Now I'm going to make a one unit bet. I'm going to continue to play from here as if I was playing the always be grind in system. I am not going to make a larger wager until I start my regressive part of the wagering system by winning a hand after a series of losses. So that's a stand. That's a loss. That's a hit. According to basic strategy, now it's a stand. That's a win. That goes there. This goes here. I've now had a win after a series of losses. And so I am going to make a two-unit wager. And I'm going to hit. And I've lost. So I'm going to make another two-unit wager. That's a stand. That's a win. So I've won two units. I rebuild my abacus. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I am going to press up again to three units. The maximum bet I am going to make as part of this system. And that's a blackjack. That's very nice. Let me pay that off. So there is three. And then... Half of that is another 35, 37, 50. So there's the full payout. Let's rebuild the abacus. We know we won't need those red and white chips for the abacus. So now, honestly, you have a choice. Technically, we won two in a row. 
and technically we added to the win stack. So you could start the progressive part of things at this point. That would be completely fine. Or you could be perceptive enough or focused enough or knowledgeable enough to realize that the only reason we added to the win stack is because this was a blackjack. If that had been a regular winning hand, just a a good old, you have a pair of kings and the dealer has a six and busts out with a total of 26, I would have just had a full play stack. My abacus would have been correct, but I would not. So either choice is fine. I personally, I'm a little more conservative. Crazy thing to say as a gambler, but I'm a little more conservative. I like this add to the win stack to be valid if I had just won the hand. So if it's me, I'm, excuse me. If it's me, I am just going to make a one unit wager. If you prefer to start your progression at that point, that's also perfectly valid. All right. When I made the wager, there were exactly nine chips here. This is a two-unit wager. That's a push. I do not want to split. All right. We win two units. There we go. This is the modification. This is what the modification is supposed to do. There's my play stack. My abacus is complete. And I add one to the win stack. Now notice, I added to the win stack, but I did not win two hands in a row. So I am not going to start the progression. I am just going to make a one unit bet. There are nine units here. This is a double. All right. So, dealer takes that. When I made the wager, there are only eight chips here. But when I made the wager, there were nine chips here. So this is a two-unit bet. And now I'm going to go back to making just a one-unit bet and wait for a win to start my regressive wagering. That's a stand. That's a loss. One-unit wager. That's a stand. That's a loss. One unit wager. That is a split. So now we got to win something or we're going to be walking away. I would like to split. That's excellent. I would like to stand. I would also like to stand. Okay. Very good. Very good. So I win two units. I restack my abacus. I am woefully short of having a full abacus. I've won after a series of losses. I start my regressive part and I make a two unit wager. I do not want to split. I will stand. I did win. Excellent. So I got paid. I stack my abacus. I need to make at least a two unit wager. A two unit wager will not get me one on my win stack. I will make a three unit wager, the largest wager I make in this wagering system. That is a 10. It's either gonna be feast or famine. I'm going to double. Ah, loss. That's a tough one. That's one you'd obviously love to have back. Love to have that go your way. So, real world, real casino. Only two chips here. I've hit my negative exit. I have three chips here. I have one, two, three, four there. I have, yeah, okay. Look, I have a casino wisdom that I've taught you many times. We talk about it at the end of almost every episode. Don't tip away your wins, right? In an ideal situation, it would be nice to tell the dealer, oh, here, just keep those. The reality is this makes an even $25. That makes this an even hundred dollars. No dealer, after I just got beat on that uh, total six units, is going to be angry if I walk away having lost that hand and I don't tip. And I'm not going to. I'm going to take my hundred dollar loss. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to record my loss. 
I'm not going to be too mad. I'm going to be enough of an, uh, an intelligent gambler to know that those are hands I'm going to win more often than I lose them. I'm going to have added a whole bunch of money to my win stack. It just didn't happen that time. A loss of $100, a loss of four units, regardless. As long as you bought in with 10, you walked away, you lost four. That's fine. That's not an unrecoverable loss. So let's just find a new table and start over. That's a hit. That's a loss. There were nine units there when I made the first wager. So that's a two-unit wager. That's a stand against a six. 17. And they stand on all 17s. So that's a loss. So now I'm one unit until I can win and start the regressive portion of things. I do not want insurance. I am going to take a card. I am going to stand. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, oh, the computer's a fickle dealer, just like all dealers. This is a double. All right, won my double. Okay, here we go. So, build my abacus. I'm here. I'm going to go up and start the regressive portion of things. That's a two-unit wager. That's a stand. That's a loss. I'm in the regressive part, so I make the same bet again. That's a nine. That's a double. All right. Excellent. That is just what we needed. So I guess you can't see all that, but I paid myself. Rebuild my abacus. Take a look at where we are. All right, we got 10 units. So we're just going to make a one unit wager. Note, I have no idea what's going to happen, but note that there are nine units in that play stack. And we're going to stand. And we've lost. And the, there was nine units there. So we're going to make a two unit wager. And, ooh, okay. So real talk. I believe this is just a hit. I am not 100% positive. If I was in the casino, I would probably pull out my basic strategy chart for these rules and check. But I am going to just hit, and that's a 12, and I know that's a hit, and now that's 16, and that's a stand. All right, that's a loss. I now make a one-unit wager, and I'm going to continue making one-unit wagers until I win a hand. Boy, the computer's showing us the comeback part of this as opposed to the win more, keep more part of this. That's a stand. That's a loss. That's a stand. All right, that's a win. So I get that, I pull it back. We have now had a win after a series of losses, so we're going to start the regressive part, and we're going to go up by one unit, and that's a hit. And that's a loss. And we're going to go up by one unit. No, we're not. We're going to make the same two-unit wager. And this is... Oh, look at that. Well, I do want to split. We're going to pause for just a second here. I'm going to stop touching the mouse. Um, this is why we do this. This is why I tell you that we're going to buy in with 10 units. And we're going to walk when there's 8. Because if I make that last bet, I want to be able to do this. And split... And that's a 13, so that's a stand. And that's a 13, so that's a stand. And that's a win. And that is why I tell you to make sure that you walk away with that little extra. Don't bet down to your last chip. Because we do want to allow for the possibility that something exactly like that is going to happen. So, we won that two-unit wager. A two-unit wager would not give me a one unit win so we are going to make a three unit wager and that's a stand and that's a loss so we're going to make another three unit wager this will be our last wager if we don't win not a great hand that's a loss so we're going to walk away we are going to record our minus 200 
assuming you have a $25 unit size, we are going to record in our app or on paper, or send ourselves an email, or do our accountability however we do it, and we're going to record that we lost eight units. Obviously not great. And it was eight units without ever putting anything there. And that's uncommon and unusual. So let's see if our simulation will actually demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate. Nine units, one unit wager. Do not want to split again. <laughs> Stand. There we go. So we win. Technically, put this here, put this here. I think we all can follow along and know that we're just going to make a one-unit wager again. And that's a stand. Very good. We got paid again. And I am going to pay myself in red chips. I'm going to pay myself in red chips so that I can now make a one and approximately half. I in the casino never bother with $2.50 chips. I just don't feel like messing around with it to get to a perfect $12.50. Real world, real talk, I'm just making a $35 wager, making it easy on myself, making it easy on the dealer. If you wanted to break these down to two two fifty chips and make the full wager, I'm not going to fault you if that's the way you want to approach things. I tend to not to. It's easy when you bet $10, then you go up by 5 if you bet $20, then you can go up to 30 If you bet 50 you can go to 75 If you bet 100 you can go to 150 If you bet 75 up by half, just get you to that $2.50 thing again, 35 same thing, 25 I tend not to mess with it. Either way is fine. I don't think either is going to affect your outcomes much in the long run. This is a double. And notice that when I make the double, I make it the same way I made the wager. The base unit comes off of the play stack. The press, if you will, the extra moving up as part of a process goes from the win stack and I'm going to double. 19. Good illustration, computer. Thank you very much, computer. Because when I made the initial wager, there were nine units here and one unit from my play stack. The, then when I made the double, I made the double the same way. There were nine units here when I made the initial wager. This is a two-unit bet. And this is what the modification is supposed to create. There we go. Oh, no, I got it wrong. Got it wrong. Because of that double, that gets us back to a normal play stack. We don't have anything on the win stack. We are just going to make a one-unit wager because we only need to bet one to win one. All right. So now we win. We put that in our win stack. You can move this back here and count if you need to. I'm going to make a one-unit wager because while I added to the win stack, I did not win two in a row. Did I win two in a row? Mm. Well, it's unscripted. I made a one-unit wager. The cards are out. Let's double. All right. When I made that wager, this was nine units. It's a two-unit bet. That's a push. It's still a two-unit bet. That's a stand. Trickiest hand in blackjack to remember the basic strategy for is this set of cards because it is so much variation. But this is a stand, and that's why. That's another push. That is a stand. All right. We've won. There we go. So once again, because we made that two-unit wager different than always be grinding, we're quickly, we would have had to make two wagers and always be grinding to, to catch back up. We only needed to make that one wager. So we make a one unit bet. That is a stand by basic strategy. That is a win. I am once again going to paint myself in red chips. I'm going to put those all here. I am going to start the progressive part of my wagering and go up by half a unit. I am not going to take insurance. I am going to lose. Now, even though that was a $35 wager, only one unit, only $25 came off of the play stack. 
the rest came off the win stack. So there was exactly nine units there when I made the bet. So this is a two-unit wager. Using TRG Wagering System 4, win more, keep more. All right. Perfect. So there, I got paid. I rebuild my abacus. And the system did exactly what it was supposed to do. It put one here. But that one that got put here was not part of two in a row. So it's a one unit bet. Stand. Win. That goes here. Two in a row. Added to the play stack. This is nine units, folks. This is exactly nine units. Keep that in mind. That's a stand. That's a loss. And that's a good illustration. Thank you, computer. Because now I'm going to make my two-unit bet. And I'm not going to split. And I am going to stand. And that's a win. So now we rebuild our abacus. We added here. We are not going to start progressive wagering. We're just going to make another bet. And this is a double. And the double comes off the play stack. There's nothing extra that needs to come off of the win stack. This started at 9. We're at 8, but it started at 9. We're going to double. It's a good double. All right, excellent. So we get paid. Rebuild our abacus. We add here. <clears throat> and I do believe that that was two in a row. So let's make that progressive wager. We're shuffling. Let's hit. Let's hit again. Let's stand and cross our fingers. All right. Perfect. So, there's our win. This goes here. Add a total of $10 there so that we keep going up. This is still sitting at 9 I'm not going to insure. We're going to lose. Okay. So, this is a two-unit wager. Let's see where we are here. It's 200 bucks. Me in a casino. If I win, great. If I lose, I'm walking away. All right, two unit wager, rebuild my abacus, add here, not going to press on the progressive side because that's not two in a row. We're protecting the win at this point, everybody. In the casino, in the real world, we are now moving in to protect the win mode. We are going to play, but we are not going to play this all the way down to there's only two units left because that would be a loss, right? Instead of a win. We have won a bunch of money. We have won a bunch of units. We are going to be very careful, but we want to keep winning if we can. That is not a split, and that is a hit. Okay. That is two in a row. Let me get some red chips here. That is two in a row. So let's go like this, and let's go like that. Blackjack. All right. So first I've got to pay myself that, and then I've got to pay myself this. So this pays the $10. This pays the $25 underneath. Let's pull all of this off. Let's put this right there. Can you see that? You can't see that. Let's put that right there as a tip for the dealer because we're winning, and we don't want to tip away our wins, but this has been a nice sequence, and we're doing well. And now we're going to add... We're going to continue on the progressive side. We're going to add $10 there. I'm not going to split. I am going to stand. That is a win. The dealer would get paid. I would get paid. I'm not going to show you the dealer getting paid. So, I need to go up by another $10 from $45 to $55. And all the rest of that comes here and sits there. Look at that. That's nice. And nine, still nine here. Still protecting the win. Still nine on this side. And let's hit. And let's hit again. And you can't win them all. And that's okay because we won a bunch. So I'm going to make my two-unit wager. And I'm going to stand and we lost. So, 
250, 300, 305. Uh, if I take off, let's see. If I do this, this would cover that. 230, 230. All right, real world. I would make one more wager to see if I could get back on a winning track. And that's the problem with making the wager. So I got to go like that. And I got to double. And that's the good part of doing that. Could have been bad, right? That's the good part of doing that. Now I can rebuild my abacus. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I am going to do the regressive part of my wager. Uh, a res regressive part of my wagering system. I'm going to make a two-unit wager. And this is a double. <clears throat> well, we're seeing the whole thing in action. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're doing the whole thing in action here, folks. And that's a loss. And I would most certainly be done at that point. I might even be questioning the decision to make that last bet. But what do we have? Let's see. Let's make this whole. Let's rebuild our abacus. 150. Are those stacks right? Those stacks don't look right. Those stacks were not right. I made the decision with bad data, but okay. So we got 100, 125, 175, 185, $190 win. That's not a bad win. I think we got some good illustrations of things there. I think we saw how the wagering system works. We saw the regressive part bring us back a couple times. We saw the TRG wagering system for win more, keep more, generate some wins for us in useful ways and useful places. We saw the variation there. So I think I'm going to wrap this video up at this point. I want to thank all of you for, for watching, and I hope this was helpful. If it was, shoot me a note. Send an email to TRG at CasinoCombat.com. Let me tell you that uh, we are getting ready to put on the website... <coughs> A flowchart for this system, we have one. It's going to be in the Fred section. If it's not there already as I'm recording this, it will be there shortly. So we have that for you. As I said, go to CasinoCombat.com, go to the Fred section. You can download that. We have some other materials you can download there. We have some blog posts. New episodes of the podcast will keep coming for the uh, foreseeable future. I have no plans to stop that. I suppose there's a point somewhere out in the year 2050 where this video is still up and uh, the little lion is uh, still collecting revenue from it. That would be fine and that would be great. Uh, thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. I guess the flip side is if you saw a mistake, let me know. If you saw something you have a question about, let me know. Send me an email. I'll be happy to talk through it with you. Thanks for your time, everybody. Tip your waitresses, tip your dealers, tip your bartenders. Don't tip away your wins. I've enjoyed this. I hope you have too.